Hey everybody, today I'd like to share with you a British team game build order that I've been working on for the last uh, two or three weeks here. This is an unusual off-meta build order that I've never seen before and uh, it's a lot of fun to play with. I don't think that it is the most competitive build order, but it has been doing well for me and I think it could be useful for other players to learn and maybe try out in your own team games. I don't recommend using this in 1v1 as you'll see why later in the video. This build order uses the Royal Engineer Regiment. This commander gives you access to Royal Recovery Engineers, the Designate Command Vehicle Ability, Vehicle Crew Repairs, the Anti-Building Flame Mortar Support, and the Demolition Specialist AVRE Churchill. I would like to talk about the Designate Command Vehicle Ability in more depth before going to the build order, as much of the potency of this build order revolves around this ability. First of all, the ability costs 75 munitions and can be used on any British vehicle besides the Universal Carrier. Immediately, it gives the vehicle a massive debuff, including a 50% accuracy penalty, an increased weapon cooldown, and an increased reload speed. In exchange for this massive nerf to the vehicle's combat abilities, it gives the vehicle a command aura that increases the potency of infantry and vehicles around it. Infantry within 40 range receive a 20% accuracy buff, 20% faster cooldown, and 20% faster reload speed. Vehicles within 30 range receive an even more powerful buff. They have a 30% faster reload, 30% faster cooldown, 30% increased accuracy, and a 15% increased to penetration. Moving on to the build order itself, in the early game you want to build 3 infantry sections in addition to your starting section for a grand total of 4 infantry sections before tacking up to the platoon command post. Having four early infantry sections allows you to cover your side of the map with sandbags absolutely everywhere. I recommend trying to get to the front lines as quick as possible to quickly build sandbags on points of interest such as fuel points and stars, as well as anywhere else that you think might be beneficial to you later on in the game. Try to take as many engagements as possible with a cover advantage, and don't be afraid to retreat from engagements that get too hairy and might end up bleeding you more manpower than your enemy. At the beginning of the mid-game, you first want to build your AEC Mark III armored car. This requires you to first unlock the tech to requisition it, and then actually build the armored car itself. Once you build the armored car, you want to immediately upgrade it with the Designate Command Vehicle ability. You then want to call on the Royal Engineer Recovery Squad. This of course can be used to repair the Mark III armored car, but can also be used as a potent close quarters combat unit, especially when upgraded with the flamethrower although I generally recommend upgrading it with Minesweepers. If your fuel control in the early game is poor, you may be able to call in the Royal Engineer Recovery Squad before you build the armor car itself. This is fine. After you have your AEC Engineers, I recommend bolstering your infantry sections, giving them a fifth man and significantly increasing their combat abilities. I personally like to equip two of my infantry sections with a medic upgrade. This allows them to quickly heal up at base and also to stay on the field longer. Use your AEC in tandem with your bolstered infantry sections to create one of the most efficient mainline infantry units in the game. However, you do not want to use your AEC aggressively. Do not hunt down enemy light vehicles with it because it's only going to frustrate you with its massive accuracy and reload speed debuffs. Instead, use it to protect your infantry sections from light tanks that are trying to dive you. Now a quick look at some matchups between the bolstered buffed infantry sections and other mainline infantry units. At long range, the infantry sections win about half their engagements with LMG-42 Grenadiers. But the infantry sections soundly win 100% of the time at closer ranges. Against STG Volks Grenadiers, the infantry sections win up 100% of the time at long range, but at shorter ranges, it's about 50-50. And I don't recommend engaging Volks at point blank range. The biggest glaring weakness I've found is against Jaeger Lightning Infantry who dominate the infantry sections at every range. Continuing with the mid-game build order, the next thing you want to build is either a mortar pit or a sniper. Your choice will depend on how comfortable you are using a sniper, as well as the availability of cover and shot blockers on the map. You then want to build two anti-tank guns before taking up to the company command post. 
you need both of these because your medium tanks will be quite delayed due to the armored car and bolts and infantry sections, and you'll have nothing else to deal with enemy mediums. If at all possible, you should put your mortar pit behind a shop locker that is close enough to the front lines to still help you in combat. You then want to put mines in the most obvious approach to the mortar pit, to help protect against diving tanks and enemy infantry. And don't forget to utilize its very powerful smoke barrage ability. If you decide to go with a sniper, keep it close to your armored car to get the increased reload speed and also protect it from enemy light vehicles. Your double empty tank guns, especially when combined with the commander of the AEC, can quickly deal with enemy medium tanks if they're placed well and catch them by surprise. You need to keep the enemy mediums at bay until you have enough fuel to build your own. Also, don't forget about the armored car's tread shot ability, which can help you stun tanks before finishing them off with anti tank guns. The late game is pretty simple. You want to get your Cromwell out around 14 to 17 minutes. Again, this will be later than most of your enemy's medium tanks, especially Wehrmacht, who can get a Panzer IV out at, you know, 12 minutes or so. OKW can get their Panzer IV out at around maybe 14 or 15 minutes, so they have similar timing to them. After you get the Cromwell out, you then want to upgrade to Hammer Tactics, and then get the Churchill AVRE on the field. Your Cromwell becomes much more potent when combined with the Commander of the AEC. And you want to use them together to fend off enemy infantry attacks and also scare away enemy tanks. The Churchill AVRE, or Avra, is one of the scariest tanks that the Allies have in the late game. It will absolutely mulch infantry squads, especially team weapons, if they do not quickly retreat. Its powerful shell also stuns enemy tanks, leaving them vulnerable to your AT weapons. You can also use the Emergency War Speed ability from Hammer Tactics to get out of difficult situations quickly or rush in for a surprise attack on your enemy. The main reason why I think this build order is not viable in 1v1 is that it requires the armored car to be around your infantry sections and your tanks at all times. This just simply is impossible when you're trying to capture points along the whole map, but it's much easier to do when you're only trying to protect your side of the map in a team game. The main weakness of this build order is how late your medium tanks come out. If you're struggling to keep your AT guns alive, you'll have to rely completely on your armored car as your anti-tank defense, and unfortunately this simply isn't enough to deal with the Panzer IV by itself. If you guys see any other problems with this build order, or if you'd like to try it for yourself, please write me in the comments. I would love to hear your feedback and also hear any experiences you have trying this build order in your own games. Thank you guys so much for watching, I hope this build order is helpful to someone.